Okay, so we're back at Orvar. We'll speak to him. He's going to tell us me to find the secret entrance, uh, which will lead us back into Zabadgoth, or the, uh, the former dwarf fortress, which has now been taken over by the orcs. So, to get back down there, we basically need to go exactly where we met the K-Rog earlier. So, we're right back down at the bottom of this place. So, again, if we just take the rightmost path and literally just keep hanging right at every crossroads on the way down. Boom! Oh, that was a nice crit. Nearly 5k there. Uh, not that one. Okay, it's not literally every right, because the first right there is actually an upstairs one. It's the second one in this case. Um, down, down, down. Not quite into Goblin Town. Another man. Some of those animations are a bit slow. There we go. Down again, and this will take us whoop, into the main room. Some of the mushroom, the little git. Uh, God, I can't see the bloody plants. That's better. And from a war and a crit with code in there. There might two deeds that I need to get spamming. Um, okay, so we're back in the main room. And this time, instead of peeing off the K Rog, who would have respawned down there just for anyone else who's doing the quests, uh, we're going to cross the bridge. Cross the bridge, uh, take a left, and there'll be a collection of stones just on the left hand side there. And that's where we were heading. So, I've got to kill this skirmisher just because he's in the way. And over here, behind the rocks, we have a passageway going in to the secret road. So, we hop inside. The secret way out of the throne room of Duri was known to a few only. All of whom perished during the fall of the Great Dwarf Kingdom. But the errant mark of a forgotten scribe preserved a record of its existence. And now it may be used to rescue the Dwarf Bori from the clutches of the Orcs. Okay, so we'll talk to all that. He's going to say protect me as we uh, go exploring this strange cavern. Uh, and see if it is what Broen thinks it is. So a secret passage inside there so we can go rescue Bori. So we're going to run through, we've got a bunch of lizards which are not really hostile, they just threaten to attack, but because Orvar is a bit bloodthirsty and just hits straight in the face, um, we have no choice but to kill everything we beat down here, instead of just running past like a sane person would. So we might as well start making a bit of damage on these guys, because he'll do it if we don't. So yeah. <laughs> can pretty much kill most of these before he's even caught up with us. Um, but we'll keep running down here and eventually we'll end up in like a big cavern, so... Murder these. There we go, nice crits. Okay, so here we are. We're in a nice great big cavern and he's probably going to say something when he sees it. By the beard of Durin! Look at this place, Lydia. Even in disrepair, such craftsmanship. Give me a moment, Lydia. I will rejoin you further ahead. Why don't you go kill everything for me? Like you have been doing. Okay, so down here we're going to have a few grod bogs. So these guys have a bit more morale and these will be entirely hostile. So if you're a bit squishy, just watch out. Oh, that AOE caught the second guy though. <laughs> That's right, it'll probably die to the AoE. Okay, so we basically cross our way across the bridge. Uh, be careful, there are many drops that you can fall down to your death there. And once we get to the far side, it will stop marvelling at the uh, the architecture and actually come and join us at the exit.
So merge these. And once we cut these two, I think as soon as we get on the stairs, that's when he's going to join us. So. Here. Orvar has arrived at this end of Zerfurk. I believe now, my friend. Rush Durinial must be just ahead. Hop over there. Through here. And this now takes us into the Throne of Durin, which, if you've done the um, session plays where you get to see the Fall of Moria, um, you will recognise this area, but I don't think I've actually done that on the camera, just because the session plays were a bit annoying. Um, but this is the, the Fall of Moria one. I think this is the, literally the one called the Fall of Moria, which is available if you did every pre-quest on the way into Moria. It's available at the gates of Moria. Or if you didn't, then it's available at the 21st Hall. Um, so we're going to talk to him. He says, search the orc encampment for Bori. I will guard the rear while you search ahead for Bori. So, basically run ahead. No, we can't actually see because the throne is actually up here. But we'll get there eventually. Uh, but the place is in ruins. We're going to have to fight our way through. Uh, putting the various groups of orcs along the way. Must be fight a bit deeper and deeper. Probably going to reverse straight into the next guy. So basically we're just making our way down the uh, western wall on the map. So we're basically going to go all the way down here, and then we come up, and then go up to the throne. So it's quite a few guys. Just group them up. Hey, we them. Nice and easy for me. Or any class that can hey, we. If you're a single target, you might take a little bit longer to kill them off. There we go. We can't go up this one. So carry on again. That one's blocked. Must be this one because this is the last one that I can physically get up through. Okay. Oh, throne defender. Um, some of these I can probably actually sneak past rather than having to fight everyone, but screw it. I've probably completed my Moria Orcs Slayer deeds anyway. Um, but there's no harm. Right, put them all. I can just creep you guys up and maybe it's probably quicker. <laughs> right. I can't move. I'm literally not allowed up there. Okay, all Vars arrived at the encampment, so basically he lets you kill everything, and then it gets to the important bit where he needs to be present, and then he miraculously appears. The dwarves are notorious for that in the Volume 2 epic storyline. Uh, good work, Lilia. But it seems they are not keeping Bori here. Well, obviously. Mazog will pay for his crimes. He will tell us what he has done with Bori. So we're now going to bum rush up to the throne. Because naturally uh, Mazog's on the throne. Going to have to fight through his special Pulpum Honor Guards. Who are not particularly any any real threat to us anyway. So they're pretty much trash. They're not going to be uh, champions of the Orcs or anything like that. Third wave, this time we're going to have three of the guys. Oh, that's a nice bit of AoE. Oh, poor Olivar, he literally got there. <laughs> Didn't get a single attack in, I don't think. Okay, so we're approaching the throne now. So we'll just wait for Olivar to catch up. How came these maggots before me? We're not the front gates barred. They they were Lord Mazog. What is your excuse, worm? How did these fools enter my fortress? I don't know, Lord Mazog. It is not possible. I will kill them for you. This guy's still pretty weak. He 
He's hanging in there. Enough of this, Mazog. You would tell us where you've imprisoned the dwarves you captured. I do not imprison dwarves, rank beard. I slay them. I am Mazog, cleaver of dwarf skulls and master of orcs. I will tear you limb from limb. And now everyone's saying things too fast for me to do accents. What's so fast, villain? Two of Caliborn's finest archers will pierce your heart at my command. Now where are the dwarves you imprisoned? Where is my cousin Bori? Dwarf slaves are no use to me, they are far too weak. One of the dwarves I slew, the rest I gave to Goriful. Oh no, no. He will be halfway to Dol Guldur by now. I should kill you all for the hurts you have caused, Mazog, but I will not. You will remain my prisoner until the dwarves you have sent away are rescued. And once we have stormed Dol Guldur and recovered the prisoners, only then will you die by my axe. I swear this by the I swear this oath by the throne of Durin. So basically, Mazog is now our prisoner. He's the leader of the the Moria Orcs. Um, so talk to the elf. Talk to the dwarf. Probably have a cutscene. Talk to the elf. Maybe have a cutscene. Okay, no cutscene. Talk to the elf again. You see the good that can be done when elves and dwarves work together. I don't think there's anything fancy cosmetic-wise. They're not particularly great items. Um, but whatever. Haldir can arrange an audience for you with Lord Caliborn. So there we go. We have to go now and speak with Lord Caliborn about what's happened, and he's going to uh, send us off on our next quest. So I think this is the last part of Book Eight. Is it Book Eight, Ron? No, Seven, Ron. Um, get some interesting cloaks. What's the wheel one like? Is that better? It's the same kind of thing. Mm, not particularly great. Uh, cosmetically, they're kind of like a weird kind of like droopy hood bit with a little gem at the back. But if that's your kind of thing, you can have one of those. Um, except that, we need to talk to Haldin now on the edges of Lothlorien, so it's going to be another cut away as we get our asses over there and speak to him. Okay, so we're back at Howdy then on La Florian. So he's back in his little flat just where it's, uh, it says Nimrodil down here. We're on like, the Eve Nimrodil inside Talon Howdy. And by speaking to him, we'll enter a little instance where we're going to go off and meet Caliborn. to see Lord Caliborn, if you are ready. The defeat of Marzog has sent ripples of hope throughout the dwarves of the Iron Garrison. Though it be short-lived, my husband Caliborn must be satisfied with that victory and turn his eyes towards other dangers on the horizon. Okay, so speak to Haldir. We do not Listen to Caliborn what, what Caliborn has to say to you. This way, Lilia. We kind of run up to the tree where we met him before. Many strangers have wandered in. Uh, in our fair eaves of late, Randir. Randir being Wanderer, which is by Gandalf is known as Smith Randir, the Grave Wanderer. Um, you have surprised me, Lilia. Not only did you defeat Grawlin the Krog and diminish its corrupting influence in Buzungar, but you also managed to broker a peace of sorts between elves and dwarves forced to stand together. That may seem a lesser matter when measured against such a creature as Gwalun. He was crap. It's not that much of a threat. But do not mistake it. Friendship between elf and dwarf may count for much in the days ahead. It's uh, Legolas and Gimli's homoerotic relationship that's blossoming right now. Um, but I do not agree with one action you have taken, Lilia. Mazog is an enemy, and a foul one. His life should not have been spared. He cannot stay here. You cannot see it from here, Lilia, but far to the east. A great cloud lies over Dol Gudur and southern Mirkwood. An evil stirs there, and in it, and it lies in watchfulness. It does not have the strength to move against us, 
unless Sauron himself wages war upon Lorien. But its power is growing. We cannot wait for the force in Dol Guldun to come to forth in strength. You must continue to be our eyes and ears, Lydia. To that end, I give you a gift, a cloak of Elfnaik. If you indeed have been given such garments, may it serve you well on the road ahead, wherever it may lie. I thank you for the deeds you have already done, and also for those you will surely do in the future. Haldir will show you the way out. So I speak to Haldir. I'll finish that in. We'll get the shiny cloak. Let me out. Let me out. Why won't you let me talk to you? Ah. The Iron Garrison struggled against new dangers unearthed in the depths of Moria, and the errant mark of a long dead scribe brought to light a secret way into the throne room of Durin. Marzog was defeated, but not before revealing that his captives had been sent with Gorothul to Dol Guldor. The Dark Fortress in Mirkwood. So there we go, cutscene. Speak to Haldit. And now he's going to give us whichever cloak we like. I think they're all cosmetically the same. Um, so whichever stats you go for, it's going to be the same appearance. Uh, I'll take that one, even though the one I've got is probably better. And then Haldin now is going to give us book eight chapter one so there's two more books left to go there's book eight and book nine um so he's gonna say talk to Isuriel at karen amroth so she is to the north we need to get our asses over there but Isuriel, from what i remember is gonna be cropping up a bit for the rest of at least book two um because i think she's pretty integral to the um the mirkwood storyline as well so karen amroth is the big hill to the north. Uh, it's going to be a fair bit of riding for me to get over there. Um, so I think I will cut away and meet up you guys over there.